What's up, everybody? Jason here with another review. I'm talking today about episode five of Andor. If you haven't seen this week's episode and spoilers aren't your thing, head on over to Disney Plus and check it out. But if you've seen this week's episode or spoilers don't matter to you, you've been warned. I'm going to dive straight into this. I'm going to start off by saying um, I know I see where this is going. Um, Given the press leading up to the series, specifically in pertaining to how season two is going to be handled, given the fact that we're we've been told that this season covers a a one year span and season two will cover four years with each each year being represented in a block of three episodes. I see that's exactly how they're treating this season as well Um, with each with each with with a specific story being represented in three part blocks. Uh, we saw that very effectively done with the first three episodes as they were released all in the same day. But now we're starting to see how the weekly model kind of breaks, breaks that down. I enjoy the weekly model cause it just gives you, it gives you something to look forward to at the end of the day. You know, it kind of brings you back to the old, days when you know they would you know tv shows would air but before the streaming thing and all the binge watching uh the binge mentality that we have um you know it's like if i can just make it to family ties i'll be okay so it's kind of nice to have that thing to look forward to but the thing where it breaks down especially with a show like this is you've got these multi-part stories that are being told over lengthy periods of time We saw this problem with Obi-Wan Kenobi, where because it was presented in a weekly fashion, we were only given one piece at a time. People would often look at it like I've seen one of the biggest criticisms of Andor right now is how how it's just so boring. You know, it's like, oh, it's so boring. They're just it just there's nothing really happening. Well, that's just because we're seeing the lead up to whatever it is in the first couple episodes. And then whatever it is happened in the final episode, the climax, the finale, you know as the story should go beginning, middle and end. Um, and much like Obi-Wan Kenobi, people kind of went like, Oh, well that wasn't, that didn't work. That was, that was, you know, but we're looking at, we're looking at each part individually, not all of it as a whole. When you binge watch Obi-Wan Kenobi, it all makes sense and it works so well. Um, same things happening with, you know, the same thing. It's the same thing with these episodes of Andor. So I feel like maybe a binge model would have been better for this show. Uh, or at least, you know, releasing three episodes at a time versus just, you know, um, one episode a week. Um, it's kind of really, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, it kind of really hurts the, uh, it kind of really hurts the overall feel of the show. But as a Star Wars fan, I absolutely love it. I love the world building that's going into it. I love the expansion of the lore. Um, one of the big elements we're seeing this season is just kind of... Um, the perspective of all the, you know, through the perspective of all these characters, you know, their moral code. And, you know, one thing I really like about this series is something that was really presented in Rogue One that this series definitely builds upon, which was typically in the Star Wars universe when it comes to, you know, morally gray areas, you think of like the criminal underworld, you know, you think of smugglers, bounty hunters, mercenaries, like, Han Solo is, is, you know, is a good person, but he can do some morally questionable things. Boba Fett, you know, before, before the new Republic was looked at as kind of sort of a villain, but he does, you know, he does some, he's done, you know, he's done things on both sides. Um, one prime example of that moral, you know, ambiguity in the criminal underworld is Hondo Onaka, who, in some instances, he's the villain of the story. In some instances, he's a hero. So, it it it's not really common. It, it that's kind of commonplace, been the commonplace in Star Wars stories up to Rogue One. Rogue One actually introduced an interesting idea, which because the Empire is viewed as bad and the Rebellion is viewed as good, it introduced this moral gray, 
within both the empire and the rebellion. I mean, and even, um, even rebels kind of did this. You have these people like with the, with the empire, you have these people who wholeheartedly believe that what they're doing is the right thing. Um, ISB age, ISB supervisor Miro totally believes that what she's doing is right for the empire, you know, for the sake of the galaxy, snuffing out, you know, seeking out and snuffing out this, these, these, these pockets of resistance before they get started. Same thing with Cyril Karn. He's the, he, even though he went about it in a way that was, that was very short sighted and, you know, caused a lot of problems. Hence in this episode, he's essentially unemployed and we'll get there. We'll get to him in a minute. Um, but you also have the other side of it, which is you have these morally gray characters in Luthen, Rial, and even Cassian Andor himself, who's really only doing this for the money as it's revealed to his group. Finally, in this episode, I, I thought that was really interesting that the way that they kind of ratcheted, it kind of started in the last episode, but this episode really kind of drove it, drove it home and kind of really brought it to the forefront. The, the distrust and the fear and anxiety that's com- that comes with a big mission that they're trying to do in stealing the payroll from this um, imperial facility. And, you know, of course, one of the big s- skeptics was uh, Skeen, who, of course, ousts and or as Cassian as a, uh, or at least Clem, in, as, he's, as he's known to them as a, as a mercenary. Um, and actually Cassian uses that to his advantage, which is like, you know, you, you guys are afraid, you know, this is, you're nervous. This is, I get it, but don't pin this on me. And I thought that was really, I thought that was a really, I thought that was a really interesting moment just because he's like, you know, I mean, you guys are, you guys are almost unprepared in places and i have to kind of pick up you brought me in to kind of pick up some of the slack even though you're not saying that because you still don't quite trust me i thought that was a really um i thought that was a really bold choice um to make um as far as and as as i said as far as karn goes just seeing the relationship between him and his mother this kind of reminded me of you know all those other other things you've seen, you see about like uh, 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 people's relationships with their parents, and I thought that was really interesting because it 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 made me a bit more sympathetic to him as a character because kind of because we've been there before. I mean, that's one of the things I really like. I sort of re- really like about the show is it's 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 taking Star Wars and making it even more relatable than it had been in the past just in the fact that it's presenting it in a very real you know it's not very cut and dry it's not very black and white there's some morally gray areas between both you know between all sides um and i think that's great i think that's great it just kind of builds upon what we already knew about star wars in such a nuanced and interesting way um and of course, next week's episode, as I, you know, kind of said, was is is clearly the climax to this three part story, and I really, I I, I really like the the three part story model because it gives us time to breathe, it gives the stories kind of time to flesh out. Um, too often we see everything try to even even when it's like a multi part arc, you see everything tries to resolve in a beginning, middle, and end sort of way within each. Like even Obi Wan Kenobi tried to do that, resolving everything within a beginning, middle, and end. And certainly, certainly there is sort of a a sort of stopping point in these episodes of, of uh, Andor. But the the it's 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 more prevalent and more obvious that these are just pieces of a story. And I do like that part about the show. Um, overall i would say this episode i'd probably give it a four out of five um i thought it was pretty good um and i can't wait to see what it's leading to in next week's episode let me know what you thought of this week's episode of Andor. what you think of the show as a gen in general so far um heck anything about star wars i'd be happy to talk down in the comments below don't forget to like share subscribe click that notification bell to get updates on all my future videos 
Follow me on Twitter at call me J Sumner. That's J with a J A Y and chat me up there uh, about movies and TV. I'd, I'd be happy to talk to you. Uh, thank you so much for watching as always. I really, really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. And until next time, may the force be with you. Bye.